The following is a live presentation of Retro Sports Network, home of the champions of the past, present, and or future. Hi everybody, my name is Ron Chuckett. Welcome to the program for this 26th day of July, 20 the 22th. This is the last day of August in the season. It finally cooled off enough to actually want to stream. And so, you get the game you were supposed to get last Friday between the California Angels at 66 and 62 and the New York Yankees, who are at 69 and 57. The Angels and Royals are in a battle royale, no pun intended, for the American League West crown. The Yankees are part of a five-team run in the American League East and are seven games behind the front-running Toronto Blue Jays. The Yankees are going to have to pass. Well, they're pretty much tied with the Orioles. they got to get past the Detroit Tigers, the Boston Red Sox, and the Toronto Blue Jays to make the playoffs. And I just don't see the Blue Jays blowing a seven-game lead to the Yankees. Tigers and Red Sox still have a good chance, and so do the Orioles. And they all play each other, I think, at least one more round of games. But the Yankees, despite the 69-57 and 57 record, have a much better or a much tougher road to hoe than the Angels who is really them and Kansas City. Although the White Sox are playing pretty well and could make some noise as we hit the last month of the year. It is a hot night in New York, hot afternoon in New York, 88 degrees, and the wind blowing in from left at 3. And if hopefully your right ear isn't hurting too much from all this, I'm not sure what the deal is with my audio, but definitely the right channel is doing a lot more than the left channel. And so with all that, let's play some baseball, shall we? As Retro Sports Network presents Major League Replay 1985. Today, from Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, it is the New York Yankees and the California Angels. And today's game is brought to you by DigitalDice.com, the best darn podcast on the web for your sports simulation and replay needs. <gasps> Find us today on Spotify, Spreaker, iTunes, or wherever else fine podcasts are listed. And it should be a doubleheader day tomorrow. We're only one stream behind. As we hit Labor Day 85, the last five weeks of the 1985 season. So we're going to run into September and into football season for real life before we finish the baseball replay. And for Ed Whitson of the Yankees, as my nose just itches like crazy, Wow, he's got four more starts, including this one. He's 30 years old. He has had a bad, bad replay, 6-10, and 10, with an earned run average of 621. Ouchie. And his 25 prior starts, only 11 are considered quality. That's 44%. And with the threshold being low for a quality start, six innings and three earned runs or less, that's bad. Against the Angels, he started twice, 13 and two-thirds innings, 18 hits, 10 runs, 6 earned. He's walked two and struck out eight. And he's one and one with an earned run average of 395. He is a standard pitcher, doesn't favor the fly ball nor the ground ball, and the fastball tops out at 86. His last win came on the 20th of August, by the way, in Anaheim, 7-4. to four. The Mariners, however, beat him 9-2 to two on the 25th. Going five and a third, he was Christmas treed. 128 pitches, nine hits, nine runs, all earned. And in Europe, by the way, 999 is the same as our 911. And for the Yankees, that's an emergency in pitching for sure. Somehow, in giving up nine runs, he didn't allow a homer. But he did walk four and struck out six. So overall, Witson 153 and two thirds. 199 hits allowed, 110 runs, 106 of those earned, 18 homers. He has walked 50 while striking out 100. And the ERA has not been below 589 all year. And so if the Yankees are going to make some noise coming down the stretch, they need Whitson to be average. Not necessarily great, but just average. Here's a lineup he'll face. Brian Downing leads off for the Angels in left field. Rupert Jones in right. A little bad second. Rod Carew, how do you do, will hit third and play first. Aha, the Yankee killer. Reggie Jackson, the DH, cleans up. Jay Howell at third will bat fifth, or Howell. I don't think it's Jay. 
Bobby Gritch, who stole second base, is at second, batting sixth. Bob Boone behind the plate goes seventh. Gary Pettis in center will go eighth. And Dick Schofield at short will bat ninth. Ron Romanek gets the call for California. He should throw about 120 pitches. Defensively for the Yankees, Ken Griffey Sr. is a seven and a seven in left. Ricky Henderson is a seven and who cares with arm in center. Dave Winfield an eight and an eight in right. That's so defensively, it's a good outfield for New York. Mike Pagliarulo was a five at third. Bobby Meacham a five at short. Willie Randolph a seven at second. Don Mattingly a seven at first. Ron Hassey is an eight and a three behind the plate. And Whitson, who pitches good like a cigarette should, is a seven on the mound with an 889 fielding percentage. That's not very good. So Brian Downing steps in at 259. 13 homers and 60 RBI as we get set for another week of baseball right here on Retro Sports Network. Whitson starts the ball game with a ground ball by the bag at second. Randolph over to first, and that's how this one starts one out. Brings up Rupert Jones. Rupert, another former Yankee, 228, 15 homers and 54 RBI. Whitson winds and deals, and there's a ground ball to Randolph over to first. Two quick out for the Angels here. Rod Carew at 274. No homers, two triples, and 26 RBI. And Carew draws the walk. And always a smattering of applause for the hot dog, the straw that stirs the drink. One Reggie Jackson at 263. 24 homers and 74 RBI. Let me know if you're actually getting sound out of the left speaker for the couple that are watching. Because I did two videos last night on my YouTube channel and it was right channel only. Pitch to Reggie. Gets away from Hassi and Carew moves up 90. So Whitson, that's a pass ball on an 0-2. So Whitson... If it wasn't for bad luck, he'd have no luck at all. Kind of glares out towards his catcher, and it's a 1-2 count to Jackson. And Reggie strikes out. So Whitson got him on the black on the outside corner, and that will end the inning. No runs, no hits, a runner left, no errors. Half an inning in the books here at Yankee Stadium. California, nothing. Here comes New York. And Ron Romanek. Looks like he's about to star in 21 Jump Street there, doesn't he? He has had a marvelous replay. In his 26th start, he has five left coming down the stretch. And the Angels are very much alive and well in the American League West. Thank you very much. He is 11-7 and seven on the season with an earn run average of 330. He's 25 years old. A standard pitcher. And that fastball tops out at 85. In one prior start against the Yankees, they got to him hard. Seven and two thirds, seven hits, five runs, all earned. How you doing, Big Dave? 11.74. He walked two and struck out three. Romantic, not Big Dave. While taking the loss. And I'm assuming that appearance, well, actually, I don't know where that was because it was May 30th. He last pitched on the 23rd, so Romantic pretty much on a full week's rest. A no decision against the Tigers. Seven and two thirds and a 5 4 win. 116 pitches. Seven hits, four runs, just one earned, however. A home run, a walk, and a strikeout. So, Romantic, this is got to be his rookie year. 188 in the third innings, 185 hits allowed. 78 runs, 69 earned, 20 homers. He has walked 57 while striking out 62. And his earn ramp average, as we said, is at 330. It's gotten better over the course of the year. For the Yankees, they line up like this. Ricky Henderson leads off in center field. Mr. Griffey in left will bat second. Don Mattingly at first will hit third. Dave Winfield cleans up and right. Ron Hassey behind the plate bats fifth. Don Baylor, the DH, will go sixth. Willie Randolph batting seventh place second. Mike Pagliarulo at third goes eighth. And Bobby Meacham at short will bat ninth. Whitson 
through 17 pitches in his half of the first inning. He should go around 115 for Billy Martin. Defensively for the Angels, Brian Downing is 7 and a 3 in left. Gary Pettis a 9 and a 9 in center. Rupert Jones an 8 and a 9 in right. Powell is a 6 at third. Schofield a 7 at short. Gritch an 8 at second. Carew in his last year a 4 at first. Wally Joyner. I wonder, did he get called up in September? Um, of course, he was the rookie of the year in the American League in 86. Bob Boone, a six and an eight behind the plate. And Romantic, not a great range of three, but a decent fielding percentage for a fielder at 966. Ricky at 329, 22 homers and 71 RBI. And Romantic starts his effort with a home run. Henderson does what he does so well. He leads off the game with a no-doubter down the line and left, and it's 1-0 New York. So Romantic grooved one, and Ricky did his job. And there wasn't anything Downing could do but turn and watch it go and almost hit off the facing of that second deck out in left field. The wind blowing in at three from left field, but at 88 degrees, that ball is going to jump, jive, and wail. And that's exactly what it did. Here's Griffey, 10 at 271, 10 homers and 53 RBI. And here's a ground ball to third. Howl across the way. And Griffey is out by a bang banger. On an eyelash, no, Mr. Howard, that's not the first time. Isn't he the all-time leader in leadoff home runs? How you doing, Matt? Steeler fan. Looking quite blue in my chat. That looks so bad against the black background. Here's Mattingly, 325 for Donnie Baseball, 22 homers, and 109 RBI. One out. And there's a line drive right side, and Carew can't get there. And somebody from Stuck in the Holland Tunnel made that catch. So two and two the count. Every day on Twitch, you all come in a different color. It kind of looks like a bowl of fruity pebbles. And... When it was a white background, and I can't figure out how to change that, it didn't really matter. It all kind of blended it well, but on the dark blue background, because I use you on my TV as a second monitor, it just, yeah. Anyway. Pitch to Mattingly. Up the middle. Gritch by the bag at second. Over to first. For the out. Two away. So here's Winfield. Dave at 265. 19 homers. And 87 RBI. Am I only coming in now that you guys are chatting with me on the on your right speaker? Are you hearing anything from this out of the left? Pitch to Winfield. There's a fly ball left field. Downing. Doesn't even have to move, really. He'll make the catch, and that will retire the side. But Ricky Henderson led off the ball game with a home run. Yankees. Audio coming through through both channels. Returning chatter. Now that's interesting. I haven't had that in Twitch. How you doing, sign mine? Okay. The Yankees get the solo homer from Henderson on the hit. And no errors. After one, one nothing New York. All right, as long as you're hearing it on two. I did the two videos yesterday, and it really was right channel only. So your right ear will hear me, and your left will hear Simon and Garfunkel and the sounds of silence. Here's Jack Howell, by the way, leading off the second for California. Gritch and Boone to follow. Jack at 217, five homers and 10 RBI. Into right, Winfield. One out. For Gritch at 261, 11 homers and 55 RBI. There's a chopper up the middle. Henderson will pick it up. And for the Angels, that's their first hit. Meacham should have had that. 
brings up Mr. Boone. Bob at 231. Three homers and 33 RBI. No, it's not. Why are you coming up as a returning chatter twice? I know you're a returning chatter. Scott, hello, darkness. Here it is, Vinny. Hello, darkness, my old friend. It's so nice to talk to you again. May I offer you a Dodger dog? Yeah, it's not even, and it must be something on my computer. We'll figure it out. But as long as you're not getting a blast in the right and nothing in the left. That's what matters. Pitch to Boone. And... Gritch tried to steal, but couldn't get the jump. So the count is, a ball, is no balls and a strike. Whitson delivers, and Boone pops this one into right. Winfield coming in, rides a Schwinn, makes the out. And Gritch runs back to first. So two out for Gary Pettis. Pettis at 281, no homers and 22 RBI. Now in one of my picture packs, it had that picture of Pettis looking like someone from Belle Bib DeVoe, a kid with a big old smile, and I learned that, as happens sometimes, someone would send in an alternate for picture day for the baseball cards. So it really isn't Gary Pettis. The picture you see there really is of Gary Pettis. Whitson delivers, and Pettis strikes out. So Hassey hung on to a foul tip in the glove. No runs a hit. The Angels leave on a runner. We go to the bottom of the second. It's the Yankees one, the Angels nothing. So Hassey, Baylor, and Randolph to face Romantic here in the second. Ron at 309, 11 homers and 39 RBI. And there's a base hit into right center field. Jones picks it up and will throw it. And going for two is Hassey and Ronnie has a double. His 14th of the year. Jones kind of lollygagged that. And Hassey beat it out. Brings up Don Baylor. 216, 15 homers, 50 RBI. By the way, we did our first show of year four of the podcast. Did a live one. So you can watch the video version of it on YouTube or listen to the audio version on YouTube. If there are topics in sports history you'd like to actually hear me go on about for a bit, let me know. I did the brand, big clue. Asked a question about the Nationals, and I felt comfortable talking about that. That was fun to do. Pitch to Baylor. And there's a fly ball to left. Back goes Downing. That is way back there. And it is 3 nothing Yankees. So Baylor kind of pops that one into the lower deck in left field. And Romantic is getting tattooed. And so Baylor hits his 16th of the year. I don't think I gave you Don's numbers. If I did it so routine, I don't remember. And makes it 3 nothing. Afternoon baseball. Be some morning baseball tomorrow. Labor Day doubleheader. And the weather has cooled off here considerably. It's 74 in Burlington. So now 3 nothing. Here is Randolph, 281, five homers, 34 RBI. Romantic gave up 29 on the real season and is getting 195 innings and is allowed 22 in the replay. And remember, he has five more starts after this. Steeler fan, again, everyone's kind of like that, that weird old dark blue. 90 in Washington today. Steeler fan pre-ordered 2021 and 1972 for Strat football, the cards. Now, is that a pick six for the Strat football cards, or are they doing the whole Monty? And, of course, Steeler fan would want the first year that the Steelers made the playoffs. And so what on a Strat chart would constitute an immaculate reception? Pitch to Randolph. 
Ground ball to Romantic over to first, and Willie's retired. It's the whole 72 season. Well, remember, I'd be very curious to see a game between the Steelers and the Raiders. Pal Rulo is at 233. Mike has 14 homers and 51 RBI. Not happy that Strat raised the prices again. I don't buy the card, so I'm not quite sure what they're charging for it. So soon since the last price increase, but that 72 season midlife crisis is one and forever. Oh, Scott, I'm so sorry. Canadian wildfire smoke to blow in. Nasty stuff it is. A few years ago on Labor Day weekend, pitch to Pagliarulo. There's a fly ball to right. Jones over in the corner. Rupert's there and makes the catch two out. There was a, some massive wildfires in Quebec and the wind was blowing south towards us. And it was so hazy that we were in the mall that no longer exists in downtown Burlington where I used to work. And it was hazy in the mall. I'm honestly surprised the smoke detectors didn't go off. Because you could smell it and you could see it. And there's nothing more unsettling than a sky that it that turns kind of that that yellowish green. And I, and I know exactly what you're talking about. Two out for Meech and Bob at 219, a homer and 27 RBI. Meacham hits a little ground ball to Carew, right on her hand it to Romantic, and that will retire the side. A better inning for Romantic? Not really. Two runs in, two hits, and no errors. I just got caught telling stories at the end of two. Yankees three. On the homer by Baylor, the Angels nothing. So here's Schofield, Dick at 206, seven homers, 41 RBI. Downing and Jones to follow. Woodson starts the third. With a fly ball, left center field. Henderson rides the Schwinn, one out. I know that for the new releases for Strat, I won't pre-order anything. That the game and the card image is 67 and any three prior seasons, 28. However, before they were 25 with a $2 surcharge. So I'm assuming that they just thrown the surcharge, surcharge as part of the price. Sadly becoming... An August tradition around Washington. Hopefully, it'll clear up for, for September for midlife crisis is visit. Now that would be cool if John and Scotty got together. John, are you a soccer fan? Here's Downing. He's 0 for 1. Wits in a pretty decent opening. 9:33 pitches, two in the third innings, a hit, a walk, and two strikeouts. Ah, Steeler fan reminds me. Technically, okay, so you will be putting in. The Steelers played a playoff game in 47, losing 21 nothing to the Eagles and an extra game to decide the Eastern Division winner, which is how up until 1965 tie breaks were broken in the NFL. You should let NFL. Oh, and Steeler fan did sub. Thank you, my friend. Only when my daughters were playing and when I played. Because Mr. Howard is a huge Seattle Sounders fan. And that'd be cool for you guys to get together. So, Steeler fan, remember to hook up his Prime to my channel. And so he's got a five-month streak going on. And I'll take my $2.50 from that. Pitch to Downing. There's a fly ball right center. Henderson moves over. And we'll make the catch. Two out for Jones. Rupert is 0 for 1. In 1972, pitch to Jones. Line drive to Meacham, and that will retire the side. Angels go in order after two and a half. Yankees three, Angels nothing. The NFL, as Ricky Henderson steps in, he homered to start the game is 23rd. Romantic his opening nine, 29 pitches, two innings, three hits, the two homers. Henderson and Baylor have accounted for all three runs. He hasn't walked anybody or strike out anybody. And you'd think that when I know I have to interject something statistically, I wouldn't start to tell a story. But that's why I'm doing these on YouTube and not for a ball club. That would be nice if you two got together for lunch. 
pitch to Henderson. Got him. Ricky swung on and missed a 1-2 fastball, one out. So the NFL, in their infinite wisdom in 1972, went with a rotation of teams to host championship games, a rotation of divisions. And despite the fact the Dolphins were 14-0 in the regular season and won their divisional playoff game, and don't ask me who that was against. I was about a year old. They had to travel to Pittsburgh to play in the AFC Championship game. Imagine that. Imagine being 15-0 and in meaningful games, but yet having to go on the road to clinch a berth in the Super Bowl. Griffey's 0 for 1. There's a little number over the mound. Schofield has to hurry. He throws to Carew, and Griffey's retired. So a good play by Schofield, two out. For Mattingly, who's 0 for 1. Romantic winds and deals. Line drive to Schofield, and that will retire the side. So the Yankees go quietly in the third. No runs, no hits, no errors. 3 nothing Bombers. So Carew, Jackson, and Howell to face Whitson here in the fourth. And Whitson may be the best he's pitched all year, just one hit through three. Carew says, ha, broadcasters, jinx there. That's a single to right. Brings up Reggie, who struck out his first time up. Whitson delivers. And Jackson strikes out again, so Ed got him to chase a 1-2 fastball. One out for Howell, who's 0 for 1. It is 91 degrees here at the stadium. That wind a little more brisk at 6. But if you're in the bleachers in left center field, you're not getting much of anything. But the sun's out. Howell in the center. Ricky, two out. Carew retreats back to first. And then I'll bring up Gritch, who singled one of the two California hits. And Whitson got him. He swung on and missed, and that will retire the side. No runs again for the Angels. A hit, they leave a runner on. We go to the bottom of the four, three, nothing, New York. So, here are the standings in the American League East, Toronto 77-51, and 51, a three-game lead over Boston, five and a half over the Tigers, and the Yankees and Orioles are seven and seven and a half. But technically, even Milwaukee has a chance to win the East. The Blue Jays have won three straight, but only five of ten. In the American League West, the Angels are a game and a half out. They've lost three straight, the wrong time to be going backwards. And those Shy Sox are kind of going at it. They're only four and a half back. The Royals, only 500 at home. That's the bad news. The good news is they have 21 games left at home. That's 66 and 59. In the National League West, the Dodgers hanging on for dear life with the magic number of 21 and a 60 and a half game lead over the Astros. At 66 and 60, the Astros would be a half a game behind the Royals in the AL West. Maybe at some point in their history, the Astros will become an American League team. In the East, the Expos have won four straight and cut the Cardinal lead to eight. Again, I don't think that St. Louis is going to blow that. But we've still got games to play, and the top four teams are all five and five in their last ten. Winfield is 0 for 1. Romantic starts the fourth with a ground ball to short. Schofield's been busy over to first. For the out. One away. For Hasse, who doubled and scored in the second on the Baylor home run. To second, Gritch. Over to first. For the out, two away. Brings up Baylor. Now with 16 homers and 52 RBI for the Yankees. 
and he gets hit. Now, the crowd doesn't like it. Baylor just kind of smiles because no one could lean into a pitch quite like Don Baylor. And the magic number is, yeah, 21, I think. They're getting there. So it's hard to tell because Baylor was a magnet for baseballs, whether that was intentional for the home run or Baylor being Baylor. Anyway, Romantic just kind of shakes his head. Here's Randolph. He's 0 for 1. Baylor got plunked in the ribs. Randolph slaps this one to Gritch. Bobby goes to first, and that will retire the side. So, the Yankees finally strand a runner. No runs, no hits, no errors. We go to the fifth. Quick one today. 3 0 New York. So, here's Bob Boone, Pettis, and Schofield to follow. Bob is 0 for 1. Someone suggested a year, I forgot, 1967. I don't think I'll do 67 for next season's replay. And was joking that the Dodgers didn't make the playoffs there. I don't have a problem with the Dodgers making the playoffs. I just find it ironic that in four season replays that we've done for the channel, that the Dodgers have made the or will make the playoffs every time. Left field, Griffey, one out. There's Pettis. He struck out his first time up. Gary, a free swinger, 92 on the replay. He drops one down, and no one's going to get it. So Pettis is on with a single. Midlife crisis listing at work. That happens. That's why we do it. It's a lunchtime special. So here's Schofield. Dick can bunt. He's 0 for 1. Throw to first, and Gary's back. So now they'll pitch out. Gary not going anywhere. He has 46 steals on the replay. Talia Rulo and Mattingly, Mattingly come in. See what the computer decides to do here. Pettis stays put, and Schofield struck out. So having a green light and a 95% chance, the Angels stand pat. And Whitson has his fifth strikeout. So two out for Downing, who's 0 for 2. Whitson, 68 pitches for his opening 18. Four and two-thirds, three hits, the walk, and five strikeouts. If the Yankees are going to win the American League East, they need this from Whitson and from Phil Necro, who have not pitched well. Downing into right center. Henderson moves over. Ricky will line it up, and that is halfway on a Tuesday. No runs. A hit. The Angels have left on four. Halfway home, 3 nothing. A Yankees. Join us later. Here's how we got here. Ricky Henderson led off the ball game for New York with a home run. Not like he ever did that before. And the second, Don Baylor plunked a two-run homer to make it 3 nothing. And that's three runs, three hits for the Yankees. And the Angels just have three hits. So on a game where Ed Whitson really needs to pitch well, he has a three-hitter through five, a walk, and five strikeouts. Ron Romanic, three hits through four, but two of those have left the yard. There's a strikeout. So, excuse me for the burp. Steeler fan says, Matt says, Bradshaw was concussed with Terry, how could you tell, in the first quarter that 21-17 loss to Miami. He didn't return until the fourth. Would be interesting to see how it may have gone if he played the whole game. 
doing some 73 Bengals in second and 10, and I'm playing Pittsburgh, and oh, every reason why I just don't like that era of football. It's three yards in a cloud of pukey astroturf, because Bradshaw can't throw, and the Steeler defense is so good that neither can Anderson. So, that's that for that. Pags is 0 for 1. Romantic delivers. There's a fly ball. Carew on the grass in the foul territory. Reaches for it. One out. And if Mrs. L Midlife Christ is listening where she's working, maybe maybe we can get something together for, for two people who watch someone play fake baseball on Twitch can get together for lunch. Here's Bobby. Bobby's 0 for 1. Base hit right side. So Jones will pick it up. Rich should have made the play, but I'm not sure what would be a more of a surprise that that lunch date could happen or that, that John's wife is actually listening at work. <laughs> What's going on in that 1985 replay? Well, let me tell you. Ricky Henderson is one for two. He started the ball game with a solo homer, and he has struck out. Romantic is opening 18 on 65 pitches. Four and a third innings, four hits. The two homers, one to Henderson, the other to Baylor, and a strikeout. And the throw to first to Meacham is back. Pitch to Ricky. Base hit up the middle. Romantic couldn't get there, and Pettis will pick it up. So first and second for the Yankees, and one out for Griff. 10 is 0 for 2. Boone and Romantic get together. Try to settle down the kid pitcher out there. That might be 2. Schofield will get it. Gritch for 1. Bobby turns and throws to 1st. And that will be 6-4-3. So whatever Boone said worked. That's the inning. No runs, two hits, no errors. We go to the 6 here in the Bronx on a hot day in New York City. After five, Yankees three, Angels nothing. So the wind is shifted in from left center now at six. And it's a hot, hazy day in New York. Rupert Jones digs in. He's 0 for 2. Both pitchers kind of sweating out there. Pitch to Rupert. Chopper, Whitson off the mound, third base side, throws to first for the first out. And then I'll bring up Carew. Rod has a single and a walk. He's one for one. So if you're a Yankee fan, you are loving what you've seen from Whitson. In fact, his earned run average has dropped two tenths. It's now at six. Base hit, left center field. Might be extra bases. Rolls all the way to the wall. Ricky got a bad jump. And that's a double. So Rod is in with his 12th double. And that brings up Reggie, who has struck out twice. It's only a three-run game. This is not a done and dusted deal for the Yankees by any stretch. Jackson swings into right center field. Henderson goes back. Carew will go back to second. And Ricky turned the wrong way, so Carew goes to third, two out. For Jack Howell who is 0 for 2. Now, that would be great if, if Midlife and Mr. Howard got together. Be great to see. Always great when members of the community get together. Pitch to Howell. Jay swings. Fly ball right field. Winfield should have it tracked down, but he goes back, and that's off the wall. So Carew will score... Howell is in the second standing, his fourth double of the year, and the Angels are on the board now 3-1. to one. Winfield just kind of ran out of real estate, and then it'll bring up Gritch. Yes. Yes, darling. Thurston Howell with the double. And Lovey in her books. 
politely applauds it. Rich one for two. He has singled and struck out. And will draw the walk. So Whitson's good luck running to an end. He's only thrown 98 pitches. So I got to think about that. I got to remember that I'm managing the Yankees. So first and second for Boone. Bob is 0 for 2. Two out top the sixth. The Angels finally on the board. The Yankees 3 up, 3 to 1. Line drive to Meacham, and that will retire the side. As we said, the Angels get a run on two hits and no errors. Bottom of the sixth here is the Bronx. 3 to 1, New York. So Romantic will face Mattingly, Winfield, and Hassey here in the bottom of the sixth. Mattingly is 0 for 2. He's 0 for 3 as that's in the left center. Downing has Akers out there to make the catch. One away. Here's Winfield. Dave is 0 for 2. Up the middle. Gritch by the bag at second. Over to first. Two out. So Romanic has settled in and Whitson at 100 pitches is starting to tire. Hassey has a double and scored on the Baylor homer in the second. In the right, Jones reaches over, but that one is a souvenir. And somebody from Old Passaic, New Jersey, made the catch. The count is two and two to Hassey. Well, Mannix only struck out one. Won't this time line drive to Gritch in the hole, and Bobby snags it. So, no runs, no hits, no errors. We played six at the stadium. The Bombers three, the Halos one. So, Pettis, Schofield, and Downing to face Whitson. And Eddie probably has one more inning in him. But now the leash will be short because any base runner by the Angels brings up the tying run. And this is one for two. He has a bunt single and a strikeout. And he strikes out again. A full count fastball right in there at the knees. So one out for Schofield. Dick is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Whitson, that's got to be a season high for him. Six. To third, Pagliarulo slaps the glove, throws to first, two out. Brings up Downing Uzo for three. Whitson, 27 batters deep, 111 pitches. Six and two thirds, five hits. He has walked two while striking out six. And if the Yankees are going to make up those seven games on the Blue Jays, this is what they need. They need the pitching. They just haven't had it. Downing is 0 for 3. Line drive to Randolph. Stretch time, Midlife crisis and D. Scott Howard trying to figure out how to actually get a meeting together later on. Scotty said he had to got together to, to spend an afternoon playing APA with Mike McAllister. And hopefully the good news is that Mike is feeling better. A little more active on Facebook and, and seems to be doing better. And so Mike, we're always thinking of you. So glad to hear that. Don Baylor bottled away, homered in the second. One for one, 16 homers now, 52 RBI. Romantic starts the seventh with a fly ball to shallow left. In comes Downing. Bryan's there, one out. 
Here's Randolph. Willie's 0 for 2. The Angels, I think, are going about to get that Yankee bullpen in the eighth. Pitch to Willie. Ground ball to third. How a hard hopper throws across the way to Carew. Two out. So here's Pagliarulo. Mike is 0 for 2. Romantic has settled in. His offense hasn't helped him. The Angels have left on six to the Yankees, too. One run, five hits, no errors for California. Three runs, five hits, and no errors for the Yankees. Pitch to Pags. In the right field, Jones moves over and will make the catch to retire the side after seven. No runs, no hits, no errors. Yankees three, Angels one. And so Whitson will be done here. They need six outs. And despite Rigetti, not well, Rigetti hasn't pitched terrible. And Billy Martin trying to lock this one down with Dave Rigetti. Rigetti 5-5 five and five on the replay with 26 saves, his 47th appearance. He has an earned run average of 378, a run higher than real life. But when given the chance to slam the door, he's converted 26 of 30. Dave is 27 years old, a ground ball plus pitcher, fastball tops at. At 95, sixth appearance against the Angels, where he's pitched quite well. Seven innings, five hits, three runs, two earned. He's walked three, struck out eight. One and all oh with four saves and an earned run average of 257, I think that said. He got the win two days ago against California here at the stadium, 7-6. So in an inning, he threw 10 pitches and struck out a batter. The last time that Billy Martin tried to get six outs out of him was on August 19th against the Red Sox, and Rigetti did just that. So overall, 64 and a third for Rags, 61 hits, 30 runs, 27 earned, a one home run allowed. He has walked 35 while striking out 69. They can go 50 pitches, so six outs shouldn't be a problem. See if the Angels pinch hit with four straight lefties coming up. You know the bench is going to be worrying. Rupert Jones, if he stays in, is 0 for 3. He will stay in. Fly ball right field. Winfield rides the Schwinn one out. Brings up Carew. Be curious what the computer does here. He has singled, tw or singled and doubled. He's 2 for 2. Walked and scored. The lone run for the Angels in the sixth. Stays. Brown ball to first. Mattingly takes the bag himself. Two out. So an easy seven pitches for Rigetti. Nothing easy about Reggie Jackson. Except for that Reggie is 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. And in the 129th game for the Angels, Jackson has struck out 110 times. Base hit left or right center field. That's extra bases. Winfield picks it up. Jackson has his 29th double, and the tying run is at the plate. And Jack Howell, but that's the fourth lefty in a row that Rigetti will face. And the computer running the show for the Angels hasn't made a change yet. Howell has a double and an RBI. In fact, he drove in Carew in the sixth. Stays in the ball game, gets away from Hassey, but Jackson can't move. So that fastball is in the dirt on a 1-0 pitch, and Hassey took a second to find it, but it did not roll very far, and Reggie, not a fleet of foot as he was as a kid. Then again, so aren't we all. And Reggie did the smart thing and anchored himself to second base. So a 2-0 count to Howell. And Jack draws the walk. So now after two quick outs, first and second for Bobby Gritch, who is one for two. He has singled, struck out, and walked. The tying run is now on base, and the go-ahead run is at the plate. Crowd now 
sweating profusely, 94 degrees as the sun works its way towards Manhattan. Struck him out. He got him. He got in the chase, and that will retire the side. The Angels leave on two. No runs, a hit, no errors. Bottom of the eighth, three to one New York. So it'll be Meacham, Henderson, and Griffey to face Romantic. Ron might get the complete game here. Meacham, one for two. And he walks. So the Yankees would like a run. Meacham has 18 steals. He's not going here. Romantic, 27 batters, 102 pitches. Seven plus innings, five hits. The two homers, those came early. One to Henderson, who's up now. And the other to Baylor. Ron has walked a batter and struck out one. And that was Ricky Henderson. This time around, he walked. So the Angels computer has not been all that aggressive in making changes. First and second, nobody out here in the bottom of the eighth for Griffey, who is 0 for 3. Might be two here. Howell goes across the way, and they're only going to get Griffey. Henderson just too fast. But the Yankees have runners on second and third. One out for Mattingly, who has a chance to break this one open. And so you got to wonder whether they're even going to pitch to Mattingly and take their chances with Winfield. They pitch to Mattingly, and he sends it into right field. Foul territory, Jones will make the catch. Meacham will tag. And on a 50-50 coin flip, they're gonna hold him. So an opportunity wasted by the Yankees. And that brings up Winfield to Joe for three. You can't sit on Winfield. He is a dangerous hitter. So second and third, two outs, Meacham on third, Henderson on second, in the bottom of the eighth, three to one Yankees. Boone, Pettis, and Schofield to face Rigetti in the ninth. And they're gonna walk him, which is the right move. And they will face Ron Hasse, who was one for three with a double and a run scored. He scored on the two run shot by Baylor in the second. Hassey in the shallow right. Jones coming in. The Yankees load the bases and leave them loaded. They didn't get a hit. After eight, they leave on three more. It's three to one, New York. So Boone, Pettis, and Schofield. Rigetti, a lot of hit and a walk in the eighth, but nobody scored. Boone is 0 for 3. Line drive to Meacham, one out. Here's Pettis. He is struck out twice and single. He's 1 for 3. Ground ball to Pagliarulo on the grass. Has to hurry. Mattingly is there. Two out. So last chance saloon for the Angels here. It's Schofield. Dick is 0 for 3 with a strikeout. Rigetti takes a deep breath, winds and deals, line drive, foul, third base side. Somebody from Stonington, Connecticut made that catch. So two and two to the count. Rigetti one strike away from the Yankees' 70th win of the year. To short. Meacham deep in the hole, and the Yankees are going to win this one by the score of 3-1. to one. So they make it look easy. The two-run homer by Baylor. Yep, the now rare two-inning save for Dave Rigetti. Angels will run on six hits, no errors, and then left on eight. They fall to 66-63. and 63. The Yankees move to 70-57. and 57. Three runs, five hits, no errors. And they left on five. Whitson is going to get your digital advice player of the game. Ed moves to seven and ten. Really, his best appearance 
as a member of the Yankees in 85. Seven innings, five hits, one run it was earned. He walked two and struck out six. Reggetti gets the six outs, allowed a hit and a walk through 35 pitches and could have thrown 15. He had plus stuff. Remember, the Yankees' ERA is now 420. They've not pitched well. The Angels, Ron Romanek, who well, here's the secrets that you keep when you're talking in your sleep, throws to 11 and 8. Eight innings, he goes the distance. Five hits, three runs, all earned. The two homers, one to Henderson to start the ball game, and then the other to Baylor in the second. He walked three and struck out one. So the Yankees moved to six and a half back of Toronto. And the Royals now have a two-game lead over California, depending on what happens the rest of this Saturday. And let's find out what is going to happen on the rest of this Saturday. Shall we? You too, Big Dave. So August closes like this. The Blue Jays beat the Shy Sox 7-6. Gary Lavelle... 2-2. Two two. Juan Augusto goes to 3-2. Jesse Barfield, 2-2, two two, is 22nd of the homer. And as Vinny would say, the deuces are wild because Barfield drove in two as well. A wild one at Wrigley. Atlanta pounds out 17 hits. The Cubs, 18 hits. You're going to make me hit return here. One second. And five home runs. Oh, don't do this. End of the month crap. Come on. Come on. All right. So the Cubs pound out five homers and 18 hits. And Larry Sorensen beats Johnson 11 to 10. Harper, four for five, is 13th of the year and drives in two. The Giants shut out Dwight Gooden and the Mets 3 nothing. Jim Gott goes to 9 and 11. Gooden falls to 17 and 7. Brown, what can he do for you? Well, he apparently hit a two-run homer his 15th. Mariners beat the Birdies 6-4. to four. Oh, Tony Dow, the older brother on Leave it to Beaver, has passed away at the age of 77. That's sad. Tony was active on social media. Uh, Mariners, by the way, six, beat the Orioles 6-4. to four. Matt Moore, Mike Moore, 15-8. and eight. Mike Flanagan, 5-4 and four now. Eddie Murray. Three for four, a double and a stolen base. Pittsburgh beat Cincinnati two to, or Cincinnati beat Pittsburgh two to one. Got by the way, eight and two thirds of three hit ball. John Franco gets the win for the Reds. Clemens takes the loss on one, and Ted had the power. I got the power. His twenty first save of the year. Tigers beat the A's eight to three. Walt Terrell goes to thirteen and six. Tim Burt says five and nine. Tom Brookins two for three, a two RBI, and a double. Double header between the Twins and the Red Sox, and they are cheering in Toronto as the Red Sox were swept. The lead now is four and a half for the Blue Jays. First one, Burt Blylevin. Eight strikeouts through nine. He beats Earl Cam Boyd 3 0. Dennis goes to 16 and 8. Minnesota with Blylevin is 5 and 0 oh since the trade. Tom Bronanski, 2 for 4, is 22nd of the year. Drove in 2. In the nightcap, Pete Filson beats Al Nepper eleven to five. Filson four and seven. Nepper nine and seven. Randy Bush is six of the year, three for four and drives in two. Royals get help. They beat Texas four to three and eleven. Charlie Liebrandt goes the distance, fifteen and eleven. Dave Schmidt falls to four and seven. Lonnie Smith hits his third of the year, two for six and a stolen base. Cardinals beat the Astros seven to four. Sorry, Matt. Danny Cox goes to 13 and 6. Bob Depper falls to 11 and 10. Willie McGee, 5 for 5. His 11th of the year and drives in 2. I wonder if Willie has a chance to win to hit 400. Milwaukee, 21 hits, including 4 from Cecil Cooper, 2 homers from Bill Schrader, and 4 hits and 4 RBI from Ted Simmons. Beats up on Cleveland 16 to 6. Teddy Higuera goes to 12 and 8. Neil Heaton, where your value is not guaranteed, 5 and 18. Schrader, 5 RBI. Fernando, 8 and 2 thirds. Beat Philadelphia, 5 to 2. He is 17 and 8. Shane Raleigh is 10 and 12. 
Jay Howell gets a sixth save of the year. San Diego shuts out Montreal 7-0. Eric Schau 15-6. Bill Gullickson 9-8. Bruce Bochy goes 2-3. for three. And that's that for that. St. Louis 9 over Montreal. L.A. is 17.5 over Houston. Toronto 4.5 over Boston. And Kansas City 2.5 over California. And yep, Paul Sorvino passed away at the age of 83. So, tomorrow, doubleheader starts at 11.30 Eastern, Tigers and Angels. Followed by the Expos and the Dodgers. In that order. So, 11.30, join us live for the doubleheader on twitch.tv slash retro sports network. Until then, I'm Ron Tucker. Thank you so much for watching. We'll talk to you tomorrow for some holiday baseball. So long, everybody.